In the last part of the GNUBLET tutorial, we encountered the palette feature. It is used whenever you want to color something in according to some data value. An important example are heat maps like the one we made in the last video. But the idea is always the same. You have a certain interval of numbers and each value within that interval gets mapped to a color. Now in order to study different color options, I will set up a very simple plot to be able to visualize the different palette options. First of all, I want to set my axe range to 0 to 1. Then I would like to define a very simple function f of x equals x and set pm3d map. So I didn't cover this in any of the previous videos, but this is how you can do 3D plots. So you can, for instance, if you have the height of some mountain as a function of uh, x and y coordinate, you can create a surface plot of that mountain. But by using the map keyword, I'm not actually creating a surface plot, but I'm creating a top-down view of that mountain, where the height of each point is colored in according to its value. And that's how the palette feature comes in. This is almost the same as the heat map we did last time, but not exactly, because doing it with the pm3d command is going to allow us to plot analytic functions in this heat map kind of style, like our function f of x. And the plot command is also different. It reads splot, which I believe stands for surface plot. So we just splot f of x. And what we get is this default color gradient that GNUBLOT uses if you don't specify anything else. So as you can see, our x variables range from 0 to 1. And that's also exactly the value of our function f at each of these points. And as you can see, what we did is we colored in these values according to this gradient that's also conveniently displayed on the right side here. So the value 0 got mapped to black, the value like 0.6 got mapped to this red, reddish kind of color, and the value 1 got mapped to yellow, and so on. And last time I showed you this demo script, and I will link to that in this video's description as well, because it's very convenient to get a quick overview of some of the gradients that you could create in GNUplot, and just copy off the corresponding command. So for instance, up here we have the traditional, so the default PM3D color gradient. And the corresponding command is here right next to this set title traditional PM3D. So that's how we find the correct line. And then we just copy this command, set palette RGB 7,5,15. And the semicolon is just used to separate commands in a single line. You can just press enter instead. So if we write set palette RGB 7, 5, 15, and then proceed to plot our function f of x, nothing has changed because we just selected the default option once more. But as you saw on this website, there are different color options. We could, for instance, go for this ocean color gradient. So we look for where it says ocean, and we see that the corresponding numbers are 23, 28, and 3. So I go to GNUplot and I write set palette RGB 23, 28, 3. And if I now plot my function f, you see that we get this ocean gradient. So there are quite a few good options on this website, uh, but you can also get creative and invent your own gradients. You can, for instance, write set palette RGB 10, 12, 14. And you get this color gradient from white up to blue, traversing through pink and red. And you can get creative here, but the results are usually quite unpredictable. And I want to go into detail about how these three numbers relate to the final gradient, but it's a little technical and it's a little complicated, and it's not what you're usually going to do, inventing your own color gradients this way. So let me show you what you should do instead if you want more control over your color gradient. What you can do is you can write set palette defined round brackets and then you can choose specific colors for specific data values. Let's color in the value 0 in black. And there are a few different options to tell GNUplot what the color black is. 
and one option is to list its intensity in the red, green and blue channel, each is a number from 0 to 1. So for black that's quite simple, it's just 0, 0, 0. So 0 intensity in red, green and blue. Now let us color in a value of 0.3, so write comma and then 0.3 in red. So this time I want full intensity in red, so 1 for red, 0 for green, 0 for blue, comma. Now let's color the value 0.6 in blue. Now there are also different options for telling Nublot that I want this to be blue. I can, for instance, just open up quotation marks and write the word blue. Now Knublot has actually saved a large number of colors, but if you're choosing something very exotic, it might not recognize that name. Also, this might not be the exact shade of blue that you want, but this is a good shortcut. And if you want a little more control, another option that you have is, let's now color in the value 1 and open quotation marks once again, and then use a hash, and then you can use a hexadecimal code for your color. And I want to color this in white, so I just go F, 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 but you can go with any hexadecimal code for any color that you want. And now if I plot my function f, you can see that I got exactly what I wanted. The value 0 now corresponds to black, the value 0.3 corresponds to red, the value 0.6 corresponds to blue, and the value 1 corresponds to white. And everything between is just interpolated between these fixed points. And that's how you can piece together your own color gradients. Now let's see what happens if we change the x range. And by changing the x range, the range of our values will also change because we are plotting the function f of x, which is just the identity. So by changing the x range from 0 to 10, we now will have values from 0 to 10 to color in in our map. But if I plot this, you'll see that we have exactly the same image, essentially. So the value 0 is still uh, colored in black, but instead of 0.3 being red, now 3 is being red. And instead of 0.6 being blue, now 6 is blue. And instead of 1 being white, now 10 is white. And you can see the color range here on the, on the right side. It's exactly the same gradient that we defined, but it's now stretched to match this larger interval. Instead of the interval 0 to 1, we now have the interval 0 to 10. And that's because the coordinates that you specify when you do this set palette defined command are just relative coordinates in your range of values. And Knoblot then takes this and says, okay, the lowest value here, which is zero, corresponds to the lowest value in my data set, and the highest value here corresponds to the highest value in my data set. And everything between is just stretched and squished to meet that exact range. And again, the range is either determined by just the range of values that you have in your plot, or it can also be set manually by the set CB range command, as we saw in the last video. But I want to show you something else about this set palette defined command. If we write set palette defined, and now let's start out at zero with green. We can also have a range of numbers all correspond to solid green. We can, for instance, color everything up to 0.5 in green. So we write 0.5 is also green. And of course the interpolation in between is going to make all the values in between just be green as well. Then we can make a really hard sharp transition. We can repeat the same number actually. We can write 0.5 once more. We don't even need to write like 0.50001 or something. We just use the same exact value and color it in red and then stretch that up to the value 1. And also color that in red. And what we get is actually this really sharp transition in our color gradient at the value 5 with solid colors above and below. And this can be useful if you, for instance, just care about the sign of some functions. If in your plot you want to show if the function is positive or negative, you can just color in positive values in one solid color and negative values in another solid color, for example. Now, watch what happens if I set the X range from minus 10 to 10. 
Again, our color gradient gets stretched to match that new interval. And now, as you can see, negative values are colored in green and positive values are colored in red because the transition is now at zero. We can now try out uh, plotting a different function, for instance, sine of x times x. Oops, I just messed up. Let's just plot it once more. Sine of x times x. And you would think that now these colors differentiate between positive and negative values of your function sine of x times x. But unfortunately, that's not the case. And that's what I was hinting at earlier. The range of values for the function sine of x times x on the interval minus 10 to 10 is apparently, at least approximately, from minus 6 to 8. Now our color gradient, which just says color in the lower half of the values in green and the larger half of the values in red, now got mapped to that interval, which means that the transition from green to red doesn't fall at zero anymore. So what we get instead is values up to about one apparently are colored in, in green. But the good thing is we now know our range of values and let's say it's precisely minus six to eight. So what we can do is we can now set palette defined and let's color it now in minus six, maybe yellow, zero in blue and eight in red. Oh, and I forgot about quotation marks here which are very important. And if we now plot that plot again, we can see that now as we matched our relative range to the actual range of values that we have, we now got what we wanted. So minus six is indeed yellow, eight is indeed red, and blue is exactly at zero. So the bright blue now actually corresponds to zero. And that's the thing with these relative coordinates as I tend to call them. If you want to have a specific numerical value in a specific color using the set palette defined command, what you want to do is you want to get the actual range of your values within your plot right and then define a color for the lowest of these values. So in our case that was minus six. Define a color for the highest of these values. So in our case it was eight. And then your mapping to that interval is just one to one and you can exactly write out what you want the values in between to be. For instance, zero equals blue. If you don't care and you're just saying whatever, I just want to be my lowest value be yellow and my highest value be red and somewhere in between should lie blue, then you don't need to go through all this trouble, of course. But sometimes it's necessary to be very precise about which number corresponds to which color. Looking at this plot, you might have noticed another issue there because it's apparently quite blocky, so there are no smooth color transitions. If you take a look at our gradient displayed on the right side, this is actually not due to the gradient. So this gradient looks rather smooth to me, so that the number of colors that are supported depends on the terminal, but it's usually enough. So this actually appears to be a smooth transition from red to blue to yellow. But in the actual plot, there are just a few discrete colors, and that's due to the samples being too low. That's a problem that we encountered in the previous part of the tutorial series, and it has a simple fix, which is write set samples. And since we're dealing with 3D plots, we have to provide samples for X and Y coordinates separately. But the basic idea is the same. The default value is 100. And if we want our samples, so the points at which GNUplot takes this analytic functions and computes an actual value to be maybe 10 times as dense, we can write 1000 by 1000. And that should give us a smooth transition. Now, everything we did so far was in the RGB color model. I said to you that Colors can in GNUplot be decoded by three numbers, and these correspond to a red, green, and blue color channel. But as you might know, there are different color models, and some of these are actually supported by GNUplot. We can, for instance, write set palette model HSV, which stands for hue, saturation, and value. And value here means some kind of brightness. And then repeat our plot command, and we get this hot mess here. Now what happened here? Didn't we say that minus 6 was yellow and 8 was red? And now it doesn't really look like it anymore. Well, the thing is, the word yellow within GNUplot is also just a placeholder for three numbers. 
And these three numbers are the red, green and blue channel of the color yellow. And also the hexadecimal code is actually just three numbers. First two digits, second two and last two digits all just correspond to a number. And what Knublat now does is it interprets these three numbers not as corresponding to red, green and blue channels, which they're intended to be, but as a hue, a saturation and a value. And that creates other chaos, which makes it kind of harder to work with the other color models, in my opinion. But I still want to show you one example. And I want to write set palette defined. And let's color in zero with zero hue, full saturation and full value. So that just means maximum brightness and color in the point one or the value one with hue one, full saturation, full brightness. And what you get from this is this kind of rainbow gradient that stretches from red to red and goes through all the different colors of the rainbow in between. Maybe let's show it for the function f of x once more, so you can clearly see the rainbow gradient. So in my opinion, that's the best and actually the only use of this HSV color model. There's even one more thing that you one might want to explore and that's set palette model CMY, which stands for cyan, magenta and yellow, where again, the first number corresponds to an intensity of the cyan, the second number corresponds to the intensity of the magenta and the third number corresponds to the intensity of the yellow. I don't think that's too useful. So I'm going to set the palette model back to RGB. And I want to now switch your attention back to the demo script. So here's the demo script that I already showed in the beginning of this video. And you can also see that the set palette model HSV command is used here in order to set up this color gradient, where it's again, this rainbow gradient here. But I want to focus on the rest of the options actually. So what you do when you specify the set palette RGB option, and by the way, RGB here stands for RGB formula. And it's actually the same command if you're working in other color spaces. So that's kind of confusing. And then you have these three numbers. And each of these three numbers just correspond to a function mapping the interval 0 to 1 to the interval 0 to 1. So each of this is a mapping from your data values. So the interval 0 to 1 that's then stretched to your actual range of data values to an intensity of the respective color. So first map this interval to an intensity of red, then map this interval to an intensity of green, and then map this interval to an intensity of blue. I've created this image to show you how this actually works. So you have, for instance, the red channel where zero is apparently black. So there's no intensity whatsoever in red. And then red quickly becomes more and more intense as we move towards larger values. For the green channel, it also starts out at zero black but only the largest numbers are actually colored in by some meaningful intensity in green. And as you can see, the value one is colored in the brightest. For the blue channel, everything is negligible except for this um, blue bar here around 0 0.2, 0 0.3 that has got some intensity in the blue channel. Now you combine all these channels together and you get the default color option. So remember, the command used for this was set palette RGB 7515. So what you see here in the red channel is actually a representation of the function encoded by the number 7. This is a representation of the function encoded by the number 5. And this is the function 15. And if you go into GNU plot and write show palette RGB formula, you get to see all these functions. So zero is just the zero function, one is 0.5, two is one, three corresponds to x, four corresponds to x squared, and so on. So you have a red, a green, and a blue channel, and for each of those you can pick a function to determine the intensity of that channel, depending on the data value. I find the results of these combinations to be quite unpredictable, but if you've got a lot of time and you want something very specific, you might find it worth to play around with this a little. What you can also do is define your own functions. So we can, for instance, go set 
palette model RGB functions. And then we can specify our own functions for the red, green and blue channel. And you do this by using the keyword gray as your variable. So previously here X is used as a variable, but this won't work here. So you have to use gray instead of X. Gray is sort of the identity map on the interval zero to one, or you can just think of it as your variable. So we can, for instance, write 1.1 times gray to the power 0 0.25 for the red channel and for the green channel let's maybe go with gray to the point 75 and the blue channel should just be zero now for i now go to surface plot a function f of x you can see the color gradient that i created so that's actually not too bad. It kind of reminds me of an STM image, sort of. And you can go absolutely crazy inventing your own functions. But if you want precise control over which values get mapped to which colors, I actually recommend using this set palette defined command and then deciding on a color for the lowest value, deciding on a color for the highest value, and maybe one or two colors in between. And that should look good. Or if you're even more in a hurry, or you just particularly like one of these options, just go to the corresponding line and just copy the three numbers in the set palette RGB command. So I hope this covers all your palette related needs and questions. It's all I have for today and thank you until next time. I have decided to continue the GNU Blood tutorial series as they're my most popular videos. Please subscribe to show your support and so you don't miss out on the next video. Bye.